thank you so much uh, to all of you for, for having me here today. Um, I will present, as you said, uh, some findings from a study of the European Migration Network on the integration of migrant women, a study that I had the privilege to lead on behalf of the EMN national contact points. Um, but before I go into the details of this study, I just want to say a few words about the European Migration Network, the EMN. I'm sure uh, many of you already know uh, the network, nevertheless, um, just to explain a little bit. The EMN is a European-wide network which is coordinated by the European Commission and it consists of so-called national contact points um, in the EU member states, uh, but without Denmark, and in some uh, observer countries. They are Norway, Georgia, Republic of Moldova, Ukraine, Montenegro, Armenia, and Serbia. And uh, these EMN national contact points, they are actually set up in, in different entities in these uh, member states. Uh, in Finland, as you all know, uh, the contact point is with the Finnish Immigration Service. But in Austria, where I come from, the contact point is with the uh, country office of the International Organization for Migration. So what does the EMN uh, do? Well, um, our main aim is to meet the information needs of the European Commission, of the uh, member states' authorities and of the wider uh, public on migration and asylum topics. And we do that by providing up-to-date, objective, reliable and most importantly comparable information. Um, so one of the key activities of the EMN is to conduct studies and uh, last year we decided to have a study on the integration of migrant women. What we did is um, we developed a common study template um, that was used by the national contact points to uh, analyze statistics, they looked into national policies and they researched best practice examples uh, from the different member states. The findings were then synthesized, compared and presented in the uh, EMN study and in addition there are also national reports available. The study in fact uh, covers all the main sectorial areas uh, of the EU action plan on integration and inclusion but I will focus today on the labour market integration. And just one uh, final word on this study itself. Um, as uh, common in the EMN, uh, the study focuses on so-called third country nationals, which are uh, migrants uh, who come from outside the EU. So let me start by presenting a, a few statistics. Here you can see uh, third country nationals as a percentage of total population in the EU27 and Norway and the proportion of women. The data comes from Eurostat, is, it is from 2020. And on average, uh, third country nationals represented around 5% of the population and slightly more third country nationals uh, were men with 51%. But then some member, stands, member states stand out, uh, for example, because they have a high percentage of third country nationals, such as Estonia and Latvia. These figures, of course, uh, should be read within the historical context uh, where there are minorities from the former Soviet states who either have third country uh, status or uh, in undetermined uh, citizenship status. And then there are other uh, countries who stand out because the percentage of third country nationals is comparatively low. For example, in Slovakia, Romania and Poland, um, keeping in mind, of course, that this data is from 2020 and thus that not, does not um, count uh, those persons who recently fled uh, the Ukraine after the outbreak of the war in early 2020. And then there are some member states uh, that have a high share of female migrants, such as uh, Cyprus, for example, while in other member states the share of third country f uh, national females is significantly low, for example in Lithuania. And this can be also related to the reasons for migrating. In Lithuania, for example, the large majority of migrants comes for labour purposes, but then, as we will see in the next slide, women are less often labour migrants than men. Women come to the EU for a variety of reasons, and these reasons also differ between the member states. Um, based on Eurostat data on first residence permits issued, we see that in countries like uh, Poland and Croatia, 
migrant women come predominantly for employment reasons, while in Ireland they came mainly for educational reasons, and in Austria they come for other reasons, uh, including international protection. But overall, this is what you can see in this uh, slide. Um, looking at EU and uh, Norway average, first permits issued for family reasons show a higher share of female migrants. And in contrast, uh, first permits for employment reasons are more often granted to male migrants. Also important to note is that since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, the majority of EU member states experienced a decrease in the number of residence permits issued, uh, with an average drop of 22%. And in fact, the COVID-19 pandemic also plays a crucial role when it comes to the integration of migrant women. And this is what we want to see in the next slide. I present here some key integration indicators. Um, we see, for example, that the average unemployment rates of migrant women are constantly higher than those of migrant men, with an average unemployment rate in the uh, time frame of 2016 to 2020 of 17% versus uh, 13%. So again, this is an EU27 and Norway average. With regard to the COVID-19 pandemic, we see that the unemployment rate amongst migrant women has increased more than among uh, migrant men. In fact, the increase was a 2.7 percentage point compared to 1.9 percentage point. One explanation uh, for this development is that migrant women tend to work more often in sectors that are more uh, severely impacted by the pandemic, and therefore they suffer disproportionately more often uh, from job loss. But also additional care work and the domestic work caused by the pandemic are more often taken on by, by women. But at the same time, we also see that migrant women perform better when it comes to education. So the growth in educational attainment was higher among migrant women than men. They surpassed their male counterparts in 2020 when 70% of female third country nationals had an upper secondary or tertiary education attainment compared to 68% of male migrants. And looking at tertiary education, migrant women cons consistently uh, performed better than migrant men. 32% um, of female third country nationals had a tertiary education in 2020, compared to 28% uh, of male third country nationals. And these figures uh, indeed suggest that migrant women face specific barriers when it comes to labour market integration. In fact, uh, the integration of migrant women into the labour market was one of the main challenges that was reported by the member states in the framework of these EMN studies. And among these challenges are, uh, as we've heard already, language barriers, but also migrant women-specific discrimination at the labour market, uh, family caretaking needs as a barrier, and also the lack of professional experience. Um, as well as the mismatch between demands of the labour market and skills of migrant women. But at the same time, we also see overqualification and de-skilling. Plus, uh, there seem to be cases where there is a pay gap uh, when compared to women without a migrant background. So we see um, that skills recognition is of particular relevance for migrant women as they are often highly qualified but don't find adequate employment. And this becomes even more relevant when we look at um, recent developments at, at uh, persons who fled Ukraine towards the EU, because those people are mostly highly educated women, but they also have, on average, one to two uh, children they have to take care of. So this brings us back to another key challenge for the integration of migrant women, which is child care. One of the aims of the EMN study on the integration of migrant women was to collect good practice examples uh, from across the EU and Norway um, on measures that support uh, women in overcoming these challenges. Um, some of them address uh, the uh, integration into the labour market uh, and the challenges that we just spoke about. Um, I've 
collected some of the uh, best practice examples here. For example, the uh, Womento uh, initiative in Finland that we've just heard about, which is a mentoring program for highly educated women. Um, but there is also the Equal Entry uh, Initiative in Sweden, which is a job meth matching method that assesses uh, both the needs of women and the needs of uh, employers. And in Austria, for example, there is a competency check for women, which is a like analysis and career guidance that is specifically for refugee women. And in Lithuania, there is a multicultural children daycare center, a daycare center for children, including migrant children, that facilitates their integration, but at the same time, it allows their mothers to pursue uh, uh, work. So these and many more uh, good practice examples are uh, in this study and the national reports, but overall, we see that member states put forward a total of uh, 54 good practice examples. However, uh, over half of these examples uh, are mainstream measures, uh, open to several categories of migrants, while uh, only the minority is tailor-made to migrant women. Of these uh, 54 good practice examples, the largest uh, share focuses on supporting the labor market integration. And the second largest is focusing on civic integration. Um, the express examples here are, for example, um, neighborhood measures in Finland and Austria that focus on um, training migrant women so that they can support um, other women in their communities and neighborhoods. So despite these integration challenges and uh, the promising best practice example, actually the study found that in the majority uh, of report of the member states who participated in this study, um, the integration of migrant women is currently not a policy priority. This does not mean, however, that there are no policies addressing migrant women. In fact, member states uh, provided uh, a total of 140 examples of such policies. The two main areas um, reported are labor market and entrepreneurship, as well as uh, civic integration. But again, I would like to point out that uh, also here, in looking at the labor market uh, integration measures um, and policies, out of the 34 policies reported, only five specifically targeted third country uh, migrant women, and the majority was addressing wider groups of, of migrants, including EU nationals with uh, migration background, uh, or they uh, targeted wider groups uh, of women. So um, finally, uh, the study provided also a future outlook, and uh, 11 of the member states that participated in the study reported that they are planning policy developments and that they have plans to introduce new features in their policies and measures uh, towards the integration of migrant women. Uh, and this is also in the light of the COVID-19 pandemic and their impact specifically on, on migrant women. So just a few words to conclude. Um, when we look at Eurostat data, um, we see that migrant women lag behind their male counterparts when it comes to labor market integration, but we also see that they are faring quite well when it comes to education. The key challenges reported are mainly in the area of labor market integration with uh, challenges uh, exacerbating during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we see that in most member states, the integration of migrant women is not a policy priority, but that member states have developed integration uh, policies addressing the situation of migrant women, either through mainstreaming gender into their um, policies or in addressing these uh, specifically. And the two main policy areas where migrant member states focus their efforts on are labor market integration with entrepreneurship and uh, civic integration. And we have several good practice examples, but again, only a small number uh, of these measures are tailor-made to migrant women. And finally, several member states are considering new uh, policy initiatives uh, or policy uh, changes. 
And uh, yeah, with that, I'm already at the end of my presentation. I invite you all to have a look at this study. It's available on the website of the European Commission, and you find there also the national reports, as well as the uh, brand new uh, Finnish report, which has been published today and is also available in hard copy. Um, thank you.